Okay, so if you're one of my students, I'm sure you want to make this. Uh, let me just say, you can't. At least I, I'm not letting you make this in my classroom. And I uh, strongly recommend that you don't make it at home either. Uh, it's running off a just a 12 volt battery at the moment. I've had it running off 9 volt batteries. Uh, two 9 volt batteries in series as well, making 18 volts. That worked pretty good. However, the batteries are running a bit low. Um, this 12 volt battery, which is a lead acid battery, it can provide lots of current. Pretty damn good. Uh, I'm just changing the frequency here. It's just got a 555 base stable in there. I think I can smell the ozone. Um, I'm certainly avoiding touching that. Now, when I was a kid, I used to make um, spark generators quite a bit. Uh, not like this. Uh, I didn't know how to do that at the time. Probably fortunate. Uh, but I used um, mechanical relays instead to make the ace table. I used to do that when I was probably about, mm, not sure now, about 9, 10 years old, I think it was. Uh, and we used to take them into school and uh, we used to give each other electric shots and even the teacher used to participate as well which just goes to show uh, how advanced and progressive he was <laughs> in his lessons um, yeah, the um, smell probably of the A-Gun is going to get overpowered in a moment so let me just cut that uh, ok, uh, hopefully nothing else is actually going to be on fire uh, this is uh, all done for a bit of a laugh, by the way. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it on breadboard. In fact, I wouldn't recommend doing this anyway, um, like I said earlier. But um, no doubt you want to know how it works. Well, let's just look at a, a simple circuit like this, which is not the actual circuit. We'll come on to that one in a moment. Uh, so I've just got a 555 timer. Typical thing, um, the trigger and threshold are paired up together. Uh, so they, de de they detect the voltage on the uh, charging and discharging capacitor. Uh, this resistor here allows me to change the rate at which they charge and discharge. And this resistor, uh, not only does it affect the charging uh, time, but also uh, it protects against the open collector in pin 7, which is a discharge pin. Uh, 4 and 8, well, we've got the uh, positive supply and the reset pin there. It's active low reset, so you need to pull it high. So the circuit continues to work. Uh, 1 is ground. Uh, 5 is the voltage control pin, which I'm not bothered about uh, at the moment, so didn't connect that up. Uh, output is pin 3, uh, which goes to an LED. Uh, I was using that while well, I was just checking that the thing was outputting. Um, but, you know, as soon as you've got sparks going anyway, you know. Um, okay, so the output of pin 3 is going to the gate of a MOSFET, and then that MOSFET is then uh, switching the load, so it's just acting as, as a switch. Now, the load, um, you know, in our, in our lessons, if we haven't done it already, you will do. Uh, we use MOSFETs, N-channel MOSFETs like this, to switch things like solenoids on and off. Um, now, if you're going to switch something like uh, something with a coil on and off, you need a reversed bias diode to protect the circuit because once you uh, turn this switch off the current which was passing through uh, doesn't want to stop so the circuit actually tries to raise the voltage so this actually generates a voltage uh, when you switch that uh, circuit off um, or switch, switch effectively switch that uh, off there uh, so for protection you use a diode and then that's going to limit the, um, the voltage however of course we don't want to limit the voltage we want to do something dangerous uh, so this is the uh, uh, modified circuit. I couldn't draw this in circuit wizard because uh, we don't have this symbol, but um, it's an automotive coil. Uh, so um, basically my coil is just replacing that coil there. It's got a primary and a secondary. I haven't tried to show you like how many turns uh, relative to the primary and secondary, but the one on the left is the primary, that's secondary. Um, so yeah, so I'm switching uh, that coil on and off uh, rapidly. Um, now I've moved the diode down here. This the diode down here this time around is to protect the end channel MOSFET because some bad things are going to be happening in this circuit otherwise. And then also I've got the resistor and capacitor as high pass filter. 
Now, um, if you remember, uh, this diode was to uh, limit the voltage that we would uh, develop when the switch was off, the end channel MOSFET acting as a switch was off. Uh, we don't actually want to um, limit it so much this time, we actually want it to increase. So rather than having a diode in parallel with the primary coil, I'm actually going to have this high pass filter. And so that's going to uh, at least uh, limit slightly, but uh, hopefully it's going to protect the rest of the circuit, but it's not going to limit it to the extent that we're not going to have a um, a voltage here, a slightly elevated voltage here. Now, uh, because of the difference in the windings on the primary and secondary, we're going to have a much higher voltage induced there. And that is then evidenced by the uh, spark we had uh, jumping across there. Um, with uh, two 9-volt batteries, I suppose I could probably, while the batteries were fresh, I could probably get it to jump something like about 5 millimetres or something like that. 9-volt um, batteries, I'm talking about uh, these things, that they're not great for providing much current at all. Uh, they're good for, I don't know, um, multimeters and things like that, which aren't going to need much much current, but um, a lead acid battery, on the other hand, this is 12 volt lead acid battery, uh, can provide a massive amount of current, uh, hence that's what I've chosen. Uh, while I was using the 9 volt batteries, I uh, did have a large, yes, it is physically quite large, isn't it, um, capacitor, as a bolt capacitor just to uh, smooth out the circuit a little bit, smooth out the supply because basically the 9 volt batteries couldn't really keep up with it. Uh, probably don't need that now actually because of the uh, nature of this, um, of the power supply. Um, okay, so let me just remind you, don't make one of these if you're one of my students. Um, yeah, it would be nice if you don't kill yourself, uh, but it is a little bit of fun, isn't it? So, uh, Shall we just see some sparks again? Let's um, get this apart just a little bit. That's a pretty big jump. I'm just changing the frequency there. You can see, maybe you can see the LED flashing away there. Now sometimes, yeah, we've got to ionize first. There you go. Definitely don't want to be touching that. I think that might burn. In fact, talking about might burn, I haven't even tried this, but uh, yeah, why not? When I say might burn. <laughs> yeah, it definitely burns. Yeah, you don't want to put your finger in there, do you? Okay, we do that again. That was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Yeah, no problem. Let's stamp that one out. Okay, so there you are. Uh, a pretty lethal 555 sign circuit that can set light for things as well. That's it.